Look who's here. He's covering the markets for us, but this guy really likes to delve into politics a little bit. And his name is David Barnson. Welcome to the show again. I'm not so sure I like to delve into politics. I just can't help myself. <laughs> I know you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Your face during this, the start of the show is really something to behold. Uh, what do you make of that massive crowd at Trump's rally in, in New Jersey, I might add? Well, look, uh, Donald Trump doesn't have a hard time getting a crowd. And, and he doesn't. I, don't, I would like to think they don't really believe they can win New York or New Jersey. It would be a real waste of resources when there are six states and six states total that will sway this election. It's Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Michigan. That's it. And I think he has a very good chance to win five, if not six of those states. He could lose four of them and lose the election. They're close. But I think that the crowd in New Jersey shows those who do like Donald Trump like him more than those who like Joe Biden. The problem is everybody only gets one vote. This is true. Uh, let's talk markets. That's what you're here for, basically. Yeah. Well, I'm, I love to hear your political. Comments, well, thank you. Uh, what's the direction of the of the market overall from here on out? We got green this morning. From here, where we go? Please remember, anybody who ever answers that question, you shouldn't have on the show because they're a liar, because they have no idea. So what I'm going to do is not even pretend I have an idea. What I say is markets could go up a lot, down a lot, up a little, down a little, or stay flat from here. One of those five. That doesn't help me. No, it doesn't investor. help you, but it does help uh, viewers to get an honest answer from an honest person. Whoa. What I think, Stuart, is the momentum has changed in the last two weeks. That's backward looking. But in April, most momentum was down. Markets are down five or six percent. First two weeks of May, things have reversed. There's some reasons for that. But where they go from here, it could change again. We're in a volatile market. The Fed has everyone on eggshells. And I think the fundamentals of the market are strong, but valuations are high. Okay. We'll get more answers to the questions later in the show. Thanks, David. Uh, David, back with us this morning. You want to talk politics? I do. What do you make of di the uh, divide in uh, Biden's support? I don't know that it's as much about the particulars of Israel policy as it reflects a generational divide. It just so happens there seems to be a lot of young people very confused morally on the Israel-Hamas issue. But I think Biden struggles with young voters, and that is a surprise for Democrats, and it correlates to this Israel-Hamas issue. But the real divide for Biden is not a few hundred votes in Michigan with Palestinian extremists. It's that young people just don't feel enthusiastic about him. Barack Obama was a charismatic person. I disagreed with him on most policies, but he was a pretty good charismatic politician. Joe Biden is not giving that energy to young people. He's certainly not. All right. Thank you, David. Intel. <laughs> yeah. So the Journal is reporting that they're in talks with Apollo Global Management to fund a new chip plant in Ireland. And reportedly, Apollo would pony up $11 billion. That's in addition to Intel's $100 billion investment across four U.S. states. Bonson. I thought that we passed the CHIPS Act to give these companies billions of dollars to do this in the United States. Yeah, we did. What happened? I don't know. I guess well, we give it someplace else. What happened? Yeah. Well, they are, were already manufacturing in Arizona and Ohio. Then they got corporate welfare in the CHIPS Act to do what they were already doing. And now next round, they're getting money from private equity. Apollo is a company we own. Intel is a company we don't own. And apparently they're going to go do it in Ireland. Okay. Uh, NVIDIA, where are they now? Uh, the stock is at $903. Okay. What's the story? Jeffrey says they're going to 1200 HSBC says they're going to 1350 Mm. Jeffrey's calls NVIDIA their favorite out of all the AI plays. So, yeah, this is another win for NVIDIA. Are we underestimating the power of artificial intelligence? That's what, that's what HSBC underestimating? is saying. Well, ask that Bonson, HSBC, are we underestimating? Earnings power not priced in. Are we underestimating the power? It's not priced in. It's 75 times earnings. I can't listen. I'm about to talk about my dividend picks, and Cisco is going to be one of them. In 1999, Cisco was at $85. Now, since then, they've made money every single year. They beat every expectation they had in 1999. It's currently at $50. So we'll get more on that in just a moment. But it ties into Nvidia's my I'm sure it does. Now, show me Tesla. Uh, what's the story there? Elon Musk is pumping the idea of the auto, uh, the, the robo taxi. In August, they'll have a big event about the robo taxi. But that is based off autonomous driving technology. And that's landing him in hot water. Remember last week we did the Reuters story that there could be securities or wire fraud um, charges for potentially misleading investors. Any comment, David Boss? 
Well, not about the issue on the wire fraud stuff. They're, I mean, that, we, we'll see how that plays out. But I think Tesla, again, they've mostly improved company fundamentals, and it was a $320 stock. It's not down to 170 because all of a sudden the business fell apart. It's down because it was priced ridiculously high. And so when the popularity thing has to get met with reality, prices come down. I want to talk about Apple and open AI. Yep. They're reported close to nearing some kind of a partnership deal. Can you tell me what they would do together? It's the AI iPhone. There are reports that iPhone 16, that is announced in September, will have AI features that integrate chat GPT from OpenAI. For instance, we're all going out to lunch, the three of us, and I decide to book it. I pick the restaurant down the street. Generative AI does all of this for me sends it automatically to your phones, tells you where we're sitting in the restaurant and how to get there. Is that something I really want? I don't know. <laughs> and would you pay for it is the question. Okay, no, what about- because always be careful of companies trying to solve problems that nobody has. Who has a hard time making a dinner reservation? Is that hard to do? Um, it takes two seconds typing a thing on your phone. Yeah, but it's annoying to then contact all the parties. Well, you know what's going to be real annoying is when that thing doesn't work. <laughs> the only other... You're your age, dude. Apple, is known, for... your age. Apple you know, is known for privacy. And when you talk about um, this generative AI, it's usually done on the cloud. Apple might do it on the device, which means if you trust Apple with your data, you could trust it even more because it's not going to the cloud. It's doing it on the iPhone 16. Okay. I want to get back to David's uh, dividend picks. Uh, Your first up is Cisco. Now, you've already said something about it. Wrap it up. All I was saying on Cisco (laughs) is that it's a byproduct of being overpriced in 1999. Hmm. It's not very complicated. You can't overpay for a stock and expect a good return. That's it. And Cisco is a great dividend grower. It's grown it over 10 years in a row. You get 3.5% today, and you're going to get about 8 or 9% growth of dividend every year. Capital gain possibility? Uh, a per capital gain possibility always, because when the dividend grows, the price grows. Okay. Molis. M-O-E-L-I-S. Molis. Molis is a big investment bank. You notice that a lot of M&A has been down the last couple of years. Interest rates high. They've gone and poached a lot of talent off Wall Street. They are ready for a next M&A cycle to make a lot of money. Big dividend growth. Already a stock price up a lot. Will go higher when M&A comes back. How much does the dividend pay now? Right now, they're about 5% dividend. 5%? Growth. Yes, sir. And you expect it to grow? Yes, I do. It's growing every single year. They have no debt, and they pay out 100% of free cash flow and dividends. That does sound good. Okay. No, I'm 5%. glad you like that one. Yeah, well, I like that one. I might even get into that one. Who knows? All right, David, thank you very much indeed. David Barnes is still with me. Could we really see seven, six, seven dollars a gallon gasoline? Um, it's very possible. Uh, you're going to need more geopolitical instability, more national movement against production, and then all these high taxes and regulation in California. Those things together could create $7 gasoline in California, yes. And if it spreads out elsewhere, if you get five, five and a half gallons. But remember, a, a lot of states are never, ever, ever going to go near what California's done. True. I mean, it's almost a dollar per uh, get for gasoline of just taxes in California, about 80 cents. But if it goes to four or 450 nationwide, yeah. that's a political problem for the president. It sure is. Big time. All right, David, thank you. I want to thank David Barnson for joining us for the hour. Thanks very much indeed. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir.